I gave you a chance. It's too late to say sorry now. Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat, and this is my updated guide for Epic 7's hottest aunt, Celine. Whether you're a new player who just pulled the character, or a veteran that wants to explore her newest set of changes, this video will set you up for success. Before we jump into it, though, make sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already to appease the algorithm gods. Let them know that you like in-depth guides like this one. And with my little introduction out of the way now, let's break down Celine's stats. Celine is an Earth Thief of the Scorpio Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with a slew of characters in this game, such as Violet, Twisted Idol on Charon, and even collab heroes such as Biken. Taking a closer look at her stats, she has 1,228 attack, 473 defense, 6,266 health, 113 speed, 23% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectus or effect resistance. This translates to the highest health amongst all thieves in Epic 7, as well as above average stats for a thief in all categories except for one, that being defense. 473 defense is the lowest defense amongst all five stars in Epic 7. At that value, flat defense is more valuable to the character than defense percentage. Most Scorpio thieves are usually not viable in PvP due to the death sentence that this 473 defense inflicts upon them. Nearly all of them need some kind of buff or mechanic to allow them to function because of how bad the stat actually is. Celine's most recent round of changes obviously help her survive despite this drawback, which is why we are making this re how to play video in the first place. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skill section, Celine is the fourth ever character I did for the how to play video series. As such, we've never done voiceover artist trivia for her. Voiceover trivia did not appear until how to play number six with Ruel of Light. In the English dub of Epic 7, Selene, as well as Spirit Eye Selene, is voiced by Alexa Khan. Most of you will know her as Sivir from League of Legends, as well as all other Riot games. She is also sometimes vain, depending on the skin, game, or animated short. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Selene is voiced by Hitomi Nabatame, who got her start as Kei Kishimoto in Gantz. But nowadays, most of you probably will know her as the voice of Black Swan from Honkai Star Rail, Nihilister from Goddess of Victory Nikkei, or of course, Chimosuke from Konosuba. Oh, me again? Selene's skill 1 is Uppercut. It has a 1.2x attack multiplier and grants her stealth for one turn. Victory is within our grasp. In the past, this move had a 1x attack multiplier with a 20% damage increase on a critical hit. Well, as expected, when they took that component away and gave stealth to Selene, they increased the base damage to compensate by 20%. The stealth, by the way, on this character is pretty massive. Not only does it help mitigate her poor defense, it makes it really difficult for your opponents to focus her down. The purpose of picking Selene is to deter opponents from using non-attack skills thanks to her amazing passive here in Intuition. Intuition says at the start of the first battle, it grants Selene stealth for two turns. After an enemy uses a non-attack skill, dispels all debuffs from Selene and attacks a random enemy with Blink. Blink can only be activated once every two turns. Blink is a single target attack with a 1.6x attack multiplier, which is nearly 15% more damage than the last time that we talked about this character. Additionally, you acquire 10 souls upon use. Not one, not two, 10. It also increases Selene's combat readiness by 30% and is unaffected by elemental disadvantage. Starting the fight in stealth for two turns makes focusing this character down from the start nearly impossible, which was arguably the biggest weakness of the character. The fact that Blink now does 15% more damage is unaffected by elemental disadvantage and you acquire 10 souls upon its use, in my opinion, paints the picture of a character that should put the fear of God into your opponents. And to really hammer that point home, let's talk about her skill 3 and its accompanying soul burn. That of course being Thunderclap. You acquire 2 souls upon use and it has a 3-4 to four turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is a single target attack with a 1.8x attack 
Multiplier. This move heals Selene for 50% of the damage it deals. It also grants her an evasion buff and barrier for two turns. The barrier strength is proportional to 50% of Selene's total attack. If that wasn't enough, when the enemy is not an elite or boss monster, damage sharing effects are ignored on Thunderclap. I gave you a chance. It's too late to say sorry now. I'm with you. Thunderclap is really strong as a skill 3 now in its current iteration. It does a great job of further keeping Selene on the battlefield thanks to the barrier, dodge buff, and healing. All that is amazing, but what I really want to talk about with this move is the fact that you get 10 souls now on Blink and how it makes it absolutely terrifying. And to stress that, we have to talk about the Soul Burn for Thunderclap which, for the cost of 10 souls, changes the multiplier on this attack from 1.8x to 2.5x. Now, for you to understand how strong a 2.5x attack multiplier is on a single target DPS, there are only 5 attack percentage base moves in Epic 7 with better scaling. Those being Lilibet's Soulburn, Challenger Dominiel's Soulburn, Sez's Soulburn, Blue Chloe's Soulburn, and Assassin Coley's Soulburn. If you remove all of those that cost 20 souls instead of 10 souls like Selene's, as well as the characters that have far worse base attack than Selene, you were left with only one character, and that is Blue Sets. And Sez, his is affected by damage sharing, unlike Thunderclap. So believe me when I tell you that this Soulburn is the pinnacle of single target damage moves in the game, at least for those that cost 10 souls. Should I show you my secret weapon? It's not my fault if you get hurt. Oh, me again? What I'm trying to convey here is tanks, damage dealers, soul weavers, all of them, to quote Sasuke Uchiha, be gone with the thunderclap. When it comes to Malagora priorities, I think you want to max the S2 damage on Blink first as punishing non-attack skills is the primary reason for you to play Selene. After that, max the S3 thunderclap because as we just established, the move has absolutely ludicrous amounts of damage. After that, if you really want to heavily invest in Selene, invest in her S1 uppercut. Let's take a quick second now to talk about Selene's exclusive equipment, which is the Rheingar PSC armband. For all my calculations in the next section, I'm going to factor in the 12% critical hit chance that you get from this exclusive equipment, so make sure you have it maxed out. Selene is one of the few characters, I think, where all three options on the exclusive equipment are quite good. It's going to be largely game mode and player preference on which one you decide to go with. The first one stuns the target for one turn when using Blink. I think this is a bit gimmicky, but it definitely can steal some games. Do note that you won't have very high effectiveness usually on Selene, so this thing might actually not work out super well against compositions that have a lot of knights and soul weavers that usually build effect resistance. Definitely the riskiest option of the three, but I do think it is still quite good. The second one increases the damage dealt by Blink by 10% and attacks the enemy with the highest attack. This, in my opinion, should be the default option for most players because, well, it adds a lot of consistency to the randomness that is Blink and allows you to kind of get a predetermined outcome for the character. You know exactly what you're going to get. Consistency is key uh, in a lot of competitive games, so no real exception here. Finally, we have increased damage on Thunderclap by 10%. This might not seem like much at first glance, but the thing is, this could be the difference between a tank or specific DPS living or dying. If you're primarily using Selene for things like Guild Wars and Arena, this might not be such a bad option. Selene's build path hasn't really changed that much since I last did a how to play video guide on her. In the two years since that video, I learned that damage and bulk are far more important on this character than speed. So you may notice that the damage between the two videos is similar, but in this video, you'll notice Selene is quite a bit slower than the 220 speed that I used to recommend. My bulk for a base build, though, actually didn't increase despite how important I feel it is for this character. It actually kind of decreased. The reason for this is the stealth that we talked about in the skill section. 
My Selene has always been one of my highest geared equipment score heroes because, well, she's a personal favorite of mine, even when I don't think she's very strong. To recommend a combination of bulk plus damage that I prefer is outside of the gear quality for most newer players, so having it as my baseline in this video I feel like would be negligence on my part. As such, I've divided this guide into three parts. A base build, and then two paths that diverge depending on how you want to push the character from there. One is going to be skewed more towards damage, which is what I notice a lot of my friends seem to favor, and one that kind of favors staying alive with high bulk, which is how I've always really played the character. For the base build, I decided to go with the speed set, as this is what most players have access to when starting out. Although, if you are a Banshee gamer, I think destruction is just as good, if not better. Penetration, I feel, is a must on this character. She's a pure, single target DPS, which is exactly the type of heroes that want that set. Critical hit chance can be a great budget option until you get to that point, and I guess Torrent too? But isn't Torrent harder to get than Penetration? I feel like if you're resorting to Torrent, just farm some Penetration gear. As for DPS stats, I find having close to 4,000 attack and nearly 300 critical hit damage is enough to kill things most of the time, or at least come very close. A soul burn on Thunderclap with this level of stats can do some serious damage or outright kill a lot of bruisers and tanks in the game. And obviously, it's overkill for glass cannons. As for bulk stats, let's go with 1,000 defense and 11k health. These are the two numbers that I keep seeing show up as the average values from every source that I've researched for this video. This makes a lot of sense as this is the kind of bulk you'd expect to see on a character like Remnant Violet or Savior Auden. These are dodge-based heroes that are looking for big burst potential. It's a comfort stat line that Selene can support thanks to the stealth, dodge buff, and barrier that is in her kit. For right side pieces, critical hit damage as the necklace is going to be the standard choice. For the ring, you're going to want to go for attack percentage since, well, you are a DPS. Boots, I went with speed. Selene on a speed set with speed boots sets her at a comfortable 186 speed, letting us focus purely on damage stats. As for the artifact, I think Secret Art Storm Sword, which is going to be her signature option, is also her only real option. Not just for this build, but every single one that you could play on the character that I'm going to talk about in this video. It provides an attack buff and it synergizes perfectly with the character's kit. If you don't have it, try to get it as I don't really think there's going to be a better alternative. Until then, use a damage boosting artifact, like a symbol of unity. I'm not going to mention an artifact for the next two builds in this video because, well, it should be understood that if we have Storm Sword, we're playing Storm Sword. Let's talk variations now. A lot of my friends really try to push the damage on Selene whenever possible, and if you've got really good gear, that is something you certainly can do as well. I think Destruction really lends itself to this character if you're trying to min-max her due to the raw numbers advantage that it has over the speed set. In this build, you'll notice that I have quite a bit more attack stats here at 4500 attack, as well as 330 critical hit damage. This is achieved by giving up speed boots in exchange for attack percentage boots. The best versions of this build are probably still pushing 170 or 180 plus speed, and probably have even more damage than what I have listed here. As always, I simply set the goalpost lower to make the playstyle more accessible to the average player, as opposed to what you'd see from super late game players or whales. If you want to flip the script a bit though, and chase more bulk after having the minimum amount of damage, you can build Selene in the same way that I do. In the past, good players simply focused Selene down and then proceeded to use their non-attack skills, meaning I got no value out of the character. I've always believed that as long as Selene is alive and on the board, every turn that goes by massively increases my chances of winning in the matches that she's good in. I accomplished that by having really high bulk stats, and even with the stealth changes, that still has been paying dividends for me, so I haven't really seen a reason to switch off of it. Is it optimal? Mm, probably not, but it works for me, and it might be something that works for you as well. There's nothing too crazy with this build. It's the same damage stats as the original build, but with the leftover stats, I simply chased health and defense as opposed to attack percentage and critical hit damage. I think again, destruction set lends itself really well to this type of build. Nothing really changes on the right side here either, although I would argue that you could play a health percentage ring or potentially health percentage boots. This is something that I have done in the past when I'm trying to chase over 16k HP. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge. Selene, as you no doubt know by now, is designed as a hero to punish non-attack skills with her huge single target burst potential. 
with Intuition and Uppercut now providing stealth, and Blink giving you 10 souls, the character really doesn't need anything else to be functional. You can basically play her in almost any scenario, assuming your opponent has a non-attack skill. You can play her with any teammates as well that you see fit, although there are some that I feel are a bit better than others. Tanks like Albedo and Ambitious Tywin set up Selene to capitalize on her crazy single target potential thanks to their defense breaking capabilities. They're also just generally good sources of mitigation. Paldus is another non-attack skill punishing unit which can allow you to double down on that role to punish those skills. Do note though that it can backfire pretty badly if you have both of these characters on the same team and world arena against skilled opponents, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. For those of you who like to play Guild Wars in Arena often, I also really want to highlight Abigail in this section. Her passive Blood Banquet can allow you to easily dismantle a lot of compositions that use see Phantom Paladus as well as Genua. Paladus uses her non-attack skill, Selene counters with Blink and assuming you're on the correct exclusive equipment will go into Genua, proccing his passive. This then forces the AI to use Genua to attack your Selene, who's going to survive due to Abigail's passive. And finally, you get to easily pick off Genua once it's Abigail's turn, thanks to the curse found in Blood Banquet. No mess, no fuss. As for good matchups, it should be fairly obvious. Any team composition that is using non-attack skills is a good time to pick Selene. Conqueror Lilius, Sea Phantom Paladis, Death Dealer Ray, Laia, all of these just to name a few. There's also units such as Ikarina and the upcoming Dragon Bride Senya, who have passives that trigger non-attack skills involuntarily. Depending on the situation, this can actually be really advantageous for you. Always be on the lookout in order for opportunities to proc these passives when playing Selene. As for bad matchups, Selene at the end of the day is still a Scorpio Thief. Even with her evasion buff, barriers, healing, and stealth, the character's still made of paper. And there's also the issue of baiting and punishing her blink attack. If you pick Selene too early in a draft, opponents can take units such as Genua, Briar Witch Asseria, Lionheart Sermia, or even Bloodblade Corin to take the hit and potentially supercharge their team's offense, which basically causes your Selene pick to backfire. Oh, and since Selene is now a stealth unit, Milam is obviously going to be one of her natural enemies due to Milam Eye and its ability to dispel said stealth. And that's going to do it for my updated guide for Selene for 2024. If I missed anything or I made any mistakes, as always, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more guides in a similar style to this one, check out the playlist that's on your screen now. As always, like, comment, and subscribe it does help me out here a ton. And enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.